Brothers and sisters, uh, brothers and sisters, welcome to uh, to this seminar. This is, inshallah, a first of many seminars um, leading up to Hajj. The purpose of it is just to prepare you and build you up so that you're 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 ready not only um, emotionally, physically, but uh, um, spiritually. You're you're ready for for Hajj, um, and this is also an opportunity. Um, um, for you, those of you that are on our packages, which is the Luxury Line 6 and the two Luxury Shifting Line 6, um, for you to get to know the guides uh, um, in those groups. I, I will introduce you to all the guides um, um, in a bit, inshallah. Um, we, we also have a, a learning portal uh, on hunafa.com, uh, which covers everything you need to know about Hajj. So, like we're going through Umrah, uh, Umrah is also there is a there is a on the training portal uh, there is a guide for Umrah. Um, it's done in a such a way. It's done in a bite-sized video, so you can actually view the the, the whole series um, um, at your own leisure. You don't have to watch the whole program um, in its entirety. You can watch it at your own pace. So that everything you need to know is in the portal. We will record this seminar, and inshallah, we'll post it on the portal, and it will be available on the portal. Uh, this seminar is open to everyone, so anyone that's going to Hajj um, um, can 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 come to this seminar and and benefit from this seminar, inshallah. Um, so I, I I understand that some people who are on our package may want to ask some questions specific to the package. If I can ask, if you can just limit it, limit your questions just to asking about Umrah. And if you have any pressing questions, you are obviously on the on the WhatsApp group. If you ask the questions there, we'll be happy to respond to you there. Um, and again, just to just to say that they limit your questions to Q&A purely because there will be lots of people, international people and people who are on other packages as well. So we're not going to answer any logistical questions just so that people don't get confused. Um, we're also... Um, we're also um, processing Hadi. That's uh, a requirement for you uh, when you go to Hajj. Um, not not selling it to an extent, but it's better uh, if you were to do it with your own guide, uh, which is us, because when you're out there and when the time comes for you to know if your Hadi has been done or not, so that you can come out of Umrah, uh, sorry, come out of Ihram, uh, we will have that information at hand. So it's, it, it'll be good if you did it with us so we can provide that information to you right there and then. Um, if you do it with other people, um, again, you have to make sure that they notify you of when they do the Umrah. So like I said, if you do it with us, inshallah, it'll be very easier. Um, so I'll move on to uh, the, 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 the main purpose of the seminar today, which is to go through the rights of Umrah. Uh, and I would like to introduce you to um, Dr. Sheikh Gul Gulraj Gachi. Um, if you have been going to tours with us, uh, with Hunafa Travels in the past few years or even before, you'd be very familiar with, with the Sheikh because he has been uh, leading the, the, the tour guides there. Um, the Sheikh currently um, is in Mecca, resides in Mecca, and has been there for over 20 years. Um, he's been doing his studies there, postgraduate studies there um, in Islamic law um, at Umm al Qura. Um, and Sheikh Al Raz has a particular interest in tafsir and has taught while out in Mecca, as well as uh, here in the UK. So um, without any further ado, I'll pass it over to you, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How is everyone? Okay, everyone as well. Um, first of all, Jazakallah khair to the brothers at Hanafa uh, uh, for inviting me and to, to speak to you guys and also for promoting me to a doctor even though i'm not i'm not actually a doctor but yeah. uh okay so first of all congratulations uh to you all uh it's a select few that have been chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ensure allah come on this very special journey of a lifetime yep uh alhamdulillah uh many years ago oh, a few years ago prior to covid it was kind of a more of a simpler task to come for Hajj, right? You just uh, get some money together, a few thousand, you know, contact uh, an agent that you trust, and that's it, finished. But now, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah has made it more of a uh, a process by by which 
you know, it's not something which is necessarily guaranteed and it's a lot more expensive. So, um, you know, thank Allah that you have been chosen for this very special journey. Uh, and we'll mention a few of the initial rewards for Hajj. I know it's, a, it's more of an Umrah seminar, but of course, this is the first session you're doing. So, you know, we should bring to mind, uh, keep in mind the rewards related to Hajj, because that's what we're coming for, right? So the Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu an, that whoever performs Hajj and does not commit any obscenity or transgression shall return free from sins just as he was on the day his mother gave birth to him. Subhanallah. So this is, this is the journey that we're undertaking, inshallah. Now if we come on this journey and we keep away from any from sins and transgression and uh, you know, do the best we can on this journey, then we would return free of sins like the day that we were born, as in we are completely free. A newborn baby has no sins at all. Abu Hurairah also narrated that the Prophet said the reward for a Hajj Mabrur is nothing but paradise. And Hajj Mabrur is an accepted Hajj, a Hajj that Allah accepts. The reward for that person is paradise. Allah. And that is the you know the ultimate get, uh, goal that we have in life, of course, is to attain paradise. So this is a journey, really a life-changing journey. Okay, so we have uh, maybe a month or so to, to your departure. So don't think it's far away. You know, this is the lead up. We have to start the process for this journey from now. Okay, and there's hadith the next slide is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. And may Allah be pleased with him and his father narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said the one striving in the cause of Allah the one making jihad in the, in, in the way of Allah the one performing hajj and the one performing umrah are all the delegation the special guests of Allah Allah, the one who's striving on the battlefield in the sake of Allah and the one performing hajj like yourselves, and the one performing Umrah, and you'll be performing Umrah as well, inshallah, are all the special guests, the delegation of Allah, subhanAllah. He calls them, he invited them. You were invited by Allah, subhanAllah. And they respond. You've responded to this invitation, inshallah. Okay? Uh, many people, you know, uh, uh, finish off that hadith, sorry. And they ask him, and this is the most uh, crucial part, and they ask him and he answers their supplications. Whatever you want on this journey, ask Allah. And Allah is willing to give to you because you're his special guest. And there is no more honorable host than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's go on to the, this hadith about the special rank and value of Hajj. Abu Hurairah radiallahu an narrated the Prophet was asked, which deed is the best? And that's the way of the companions, right? They always want to know what's the best. The Prophet ﷺ said, belief in Allah and his messenger. He was then asked, what is next? The Prophet ﷺ said, jihad, striving in the cause of Allah. He was further asked, and what is next after that? He said, hajj mabru. I accepted hajj by Allah Almighty. So this is undertaking, inshallah, no mean feat. It's not just another journey. It's not just another trip. This is potentially, inshallah, we're a month away from a journey. Uh, that could be a, a journey of a lifetime, inshallah. We should start our preparations now for this special journey of a lifetime, inshallah. Yeah. So, you know, previously people would come. It would be a you know six-month journey for people, right? So it was basically the whole year would be geared toward this one opportunity. So alhamdulillah, Allah has made it easy. Uh, the rewards are immense. But for those who have an accepted Hajj, then that will not be easy. The rewards are so great, it doesn't come easy, right? So that's for someone who has an accepted Hajj. So for us to attain an accepted Hajj, that is our aim. It's not just to go there and you know go through the different rites and that's it, and come back in one piece. It's for it to be an accepted Hajj. And signs of an accepted Hajj is that a person changes for the better and continues with good deeds and improvement. So we come back better, we come back a changed person, we come back and our whole life is now geared towards paradise, inshallah.
Okay. And this, of course, Rick, you know, we thank our brothers and uh, from uh, Honafa for for organizing these uh, these uh, uh, this development program to aid you in this uh, in this effort, inshallah. And the wheels of change, as we said, need to be set in motion from now. Okay, don't think, you know, 9th of June, you know, that's where my journey starts. No, it starts from now, right? Because we have to thank Allah for this amazing opportunity. We are not guaranteed that we will be going for Hajj. It's not a guarantee. Yes, you booked your place and everything, but, you know, so many stories. Somebody goes to the airport, break, you know, la qadr Allah, something happens, an accident happens, something happens, and they are unable to make it. There's been other cases where a person has gone there not thinking that they're going, and the last minute they've gone. So, you know, things can change. We have to continually thank Allah for this opportunity and so that we are, you know, it increases our chances of inshallah going. Leave any haram that we are involved in. Okay, from now we need to make that change. Okay, we don't want to get there and then start, you know, trying to change while we're out there. No, start it from now. Start the process now so that we're fully you know, on board, on the, you know, ready to take and uh, make make the most of this opportunity. Pay off your debts, or at least have an arrangement of repayment. Okay, so you know, if there's a, you have something in, uh, set with regards to someone who's who you're in debt with, then then inshallah that at least make that something that is arranged. And also, uh, of course, if you are indebted to anyone, then you have to you know seek the permission. For you to to go because obviously you're using this money uh for this hajj but inshallah hope that doesn't apply to, to anyone seek people's forgiveness this is a a big journey and there are people who have been on this journey that haven't returned yep so uh you know uh, take that time out inshallah to to extend uh forgiveness to others and uh and request that from others too make a stikhara before traveling so now we're just going to quickly mention a few things about traveling I'm sure coming closer to the time of travel, there will be some, you know, reminders regarding these things as well. But we just set it to to get the picture right, inshallah. So I'll make istikhara before a travel before traveling. Istikhara just to pray two raka of non-obligatory salah or outside of the, the five salahs. Pray two raka. It could be your sunnah. It could be, uh, you know, the two raka after wudu. Could be duha or anything. And then there's a specific dua. In to the Hisn Muslim and other du'a books. Uh, and this is regarding, you know, you're setting out for the journey of Hajj. You know, um, uh, even when the, when the companions would do, even like tying their shoelaces, something mundane, they would they would make istikhara. So, you know, please do do that. Make du'a, you know, exchange the du'as with families and friends. So they come Allah uh, and so on. Uh, download some useful apps before you go. Uh, du'as, you know, you want to, you're going to have plenty, plenty of opportunities to make du'as. So get hold of some nice uh, du'as from the Quran, the Sunnah, and uh, and other nice du'as. Hajj and Umrah guides have that something handy as well. I'm sure they'll be provided as well, but it's always good to have something uh, handy on your phones and also a physical copy in case there's times when your you know your phone dies or, or, or you don't have access to it. As a traveler, your du'as are more readily accepted. So make the most of that opportunity. So even from when you set out from your house, start your du'as from there, from your travel and start. You don't have to wait till you get to Hajj. You know, start the du'as from your travel, inshallah. And you're going to Makkah. And it is the greatest place on earth. Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whilst addressing Makkah, and this is when he was forced out of Makkah uh, for the hijrah, he said, by Allah, you are the best of lands of Allah. And the best land of Allah to me, to the Prophet Sallallahu And were it not for the fact that I was expelled from you, I would never have left. SubhanAllah. So we're going in a very special place uh, as a very special delegation of Allah as well. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the prayer in this masjid of mine, Ayy Medina, is more excellent than a thousand prayers in any other place except for Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Makkah. For the prayer in Masjid Al-Haram is a hundred thousand times more excellent than what you are praying uh, current okay, so we're going to a very uh special place, inshallah. Uh, Majlis of Medina as well. You'll be doing that after your your Hajj, of course. Uh, but Medina is a sanctuary from this and the, you know the from the borders, and no heresy nor innovated or sins should be committed in it. 
whoever innovates a heresy or commits a sin, he will invoke the curse of Allah, the angels, and all the people together. So be aware, not only in Medina, but in, of course in Makkah, you know, keep away from sins. Your, your deeds are multiplied, but likewise your sins are greater. Okay, so be, be, be careful with that regards, inshallah. Okay, so in general preparation, learn about the Umrah. You know, that's the first step that we're going to be making. The history of Makkah and Medina as well, of course. The seed of the Prophet ﷺ is all centered around these two cities. Uh, return the rights and ask for forgiveness from any for any wrong towards another person. Very important before we set out. Repent to Allah. Yes, very important. We're setting out on this journey. We ask Allah's uh, repentance from Allah and Allah's help in facilitating the special journey. And focus on why you are undertaking this journey. Yeah, we mentioned some very important hadith at the beginning. This is just not another, not a, another holiday, right? Definitely. It's not another holiday. It's not just a, a tick uh, on the list of, of pillars that you've done on, on the things that you have to do. No, this is a major turning point in your life. Okay. So inshallah, today we're going to focus a bit just on the on the Umrah part of things. And we'll have um, we'll have some other sessions with other mashaykh. Um, we will inshallah go into more details on the other aspects. So yes, it's, an, it's a month away. But inshallah, we want to give you, uh, you know, an, an initial understanding of this, inshallah. Don't worry if you don't fully comprehend anything. There's plenty of time and plenty of help from the brothers, inshallah, to get it, you know, completely set in your mind before you before you come, inshallah. And even when you arrive, inshallah, uh, you know, there'll be assistance with this and reminders of that, inshallah. So, so don't worry, don't stress, inshallah, but be prepared as best as you can and enjoy it. So Umrah composes of four parts. You have the ihram. This is a state uh, a person is in and includes clothing and other things as well. Then you have the tawaf, going around the Kaaba seven times. The sa'i, to walk back and forth from Safa and Marwa and seven times. And then you have the halq, the, the shaving or the trimming uh, of the hair. Okay, so that's just the four uh, components of ihram, of the umrah rather. So the ihram, the first part, the ihram. Ihram is a state that a pilgrim will be in for the entire duration of the pilgrimage. Okay, so this is from the time that you set out. Uh, oh, sorry, from the time that you pass the miqat, uh, you will be in that state until you've finished the Umrah in uh, in Mecca. So it's composed of three items: the dress code, how one's dresses, a person dresses, the intention and the declaration of that. The yeah, saying the the niya of the of the ihram. And the restrictions associated with that. Okay, so as for the dress code for female programs, for female programs, there's no specific dress code as such. Okay, some people talk about wearing white, but there is nothing. Okay, you just wear your normal Islamic clothing. So, you know, jilbab, hijab, etc. The only exceptions are that gloves and a niqab for female programs are, are, are not allowed. So gloves, you know, not allowed. As for niqab, that doesn't mean that a person, a woman who normally covers her face cannot cover her face. She can cover her face, but she can't wear a specific piece of clothing known as niqab, which uh, covers the face and leaves an opening for the eyes. Okay? So, so long as that doesn't apply, then the uh, a woman can, for example, wrap a scarf around her, her face, can uh, have something going over her, Attached, attached to her, which, which which falls over her and covers her, her face, that's not a problem, inshallah. It's just that specific uh, niqab, that cloth, which has an opening for the eyes uh, and it's, you know, attached to the to the head. Uh, and they can wear the normal footwear, uh, obviously covering the head and, and so on. So, yeah, inshallah. And as for the next, uh, for the men, so the dress code for the, for the male pilgrims, um, basically, they, they are to wear two large white cloths, known as the ihram clothing. They cannot cover their head, so no hats or anything, uh, and they can't wear what is known as limb-tailored clo clothes. So a lot of people say, uh, you know, stitched clothing. It's not quite stitched because even the ihram is stitched, right? So what it means is that a clothing that takes the shape of a part of your limb. So, for example, a thobe. It has an opening for the arms. It has an opening for the body. 
trousers, as openings for the legs, uh, underwear, all these kind of things are not allowed. So basically any kind of clothing bar the the ihram. Uh, male programs wear sandals, that's not a problem. Does as long so it doesn't even covering the upper feet is fine as long as it's regarded as a sandal, okay? Uh, and it's below the ankles. Okay, so like we have there, a uh, sports sandal is fine, crocs is fine. Anything that's regarded as sandals that doesn't cover the ankles, show. Okay, so that's for the for the men. And then uh, next uh, slide. Okay, so before entering Ihram now, a pilgrim is encouraged to do the following. And this should be done uh, before leaving your, your house in London, for example, it will be easier. So, you know, to bathe, to perfume the, perfume the body, for the males, of course, uh, to trim the nails and, and pubic hair, or public hair, the pubic hair. Uh, uh, pilgrims are permitted, they're allowed to wear wristwatch, rings, glasses, earphones, ear aids, belts, money pouches, all these, they're not regarded as as clothing that you know, covers the limbs, okay? Uh, you're allowed to remove the ihram to have a shower, no problem. Uh, change into a new set of ihram clothing, likewise, not a problem. Perfume should be applied to the body, but not the ihram. Yeah, not the ihram. So the first part that we talked about, bathing, cleansing oneself, that can be done in, the, uh, in your house in London. As for wearing the ihram clothing itself, then... Uh, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't know if it's a, di is it a direct flight or are you stopping off somewhere? It is a direct flight. Okay, if it's a direct flight, then in that case, yeah, no, uh, no. an advice uh, to the men would be to maybe yeah. just wear the bottom. If you're wearing a thole, if you plan to wear a thole, then it was quite easier just to wear the bottom part of your ihram, yeah. uh, the izar, yeah. and then put your thole on top so that when it comes to actually wearing your ihram, you simply just have to take off your thobe and put the top part on. Because remember, uh, you're probably going to have a full plane uh, uh, if you start uh, trying, everyone trying to go into the toilet and get changed. It's going to be a long wait and it's going to be, you know, you don't want to get to the point where the, the knee part starts and you're not. So, you know, prepare yourself beforehand, inshallah, for that. Sorry, sorry Sheikh, to stop you. Uh, okay. Brother Ravia, uh, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't mind going on mute, Brother Ravia? Yeah. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Wa Brother, if you uh, don't mind going on mute. Oh, sorry. Okay. You want to go on? Yeah, okay. please. Yeah, mute, yeah. Uh, next. Uh, next slide. Please. Okay. So. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. One second. I'm in trouble. Um, so the declaration, you guys can hear me? Yeah. Okay. So the intention, so this is the ihram. Now you're entering into the state of ihram. Okay. So you must enter into ihram before crossing the geographical borders known as miqat. Okay. So the miqat uh, would extend actually. So it's around half an hour before you land in Jeddah. Okay. Before that, you have to have entered into the state of ihram okay not only the clothing so your clothing you can wear anytime you can literally be wearing that in london or wherever okay but the in, in, main thing is the intention so you stay that say the intention uh around half an hour i mean you i'm sure you'll be given many notices by the, uh, on your flight especially if it's a saudi airlines flight um so you're looking at around half an hour before uh before landing uh, obviously, preparation for that needs to be done well in advance. So you need to be in your clothing. You don't leave it to the last, you know, forty minutes before you land, and then everyone's trying to get changed at the same time. So obviously, prepare that well in advance. Um, and then you say the declaration, which is labbaik Allahumma umrah fi umrah. Yeah, wa bismillah Allahumma labbaik umrah. Um, just to enter. Once you've said that, now, uh, now you're in the state of ihram, and all the restrictions of ihram apply to you and that restriction continues until you've completed your umrah so what are these restrictions first of all plucking or forcibly removing any hair uh can so we have a question can you do ihram from home you can do you can do but then you're just basically it's better to to at least uh you know wait until you're on the flight or at least okay 
Uh, why? Because now you're unnecessarily putting restrictions on yourself from the house. Uh, and it's better to do it closer to the, the meat park point. If you believe, if you think that you're going to possibly miss the, the Mirad point because you'll be sleeping or you don't, you're unsure, whatever, uh, then fine, you can make the a little bit earlier. But you know, before the flight, I would I would say no. Uh Ihram after two rakah. So the two rakah, there's not a set thing that you have to pray the two rakah before Ihram. It's normally if there's something happens to be a salah, then then it's good. For example, uh, I'm not sure what time your flight is, but if it happens to be a salah, for example, I don't know, Isha or Fajr or Dhuhr or something like this, you can pray that and then, you know, uh, get into your ihram. Um, they have a prayer facilities on the plane as well. So if you wanted to pray something before you uh, enter ihram, then that's the opportunity is there, inshallah. Yeah, so I personally wouldn't advise you because it's not it's not like the Prophet did it from the home. He did it when he was at the near park point himself. And you're just putting unnecessary restrictions on yourself uh, for a long journey, a longer journey than you need to. Um, there's no harm in doing it prior to the Miqat or, you know, it's permissible. But I said, you know, I would leave it at least until you're on the plane. Uh, so not removing or plucking any hair. So that can be done beforehand. But then once you're in Ihram, uh, you can't do that. Okay, when is the best time to get into Ihram? The best time in terms, so there's two things. There's one is getting into the clothing of Ihram. So I would advise in terms of the clothing of Ihram to have the bottom part of your Ihram if you're wearing a thobe for the men so that it's easy to get into. That clothing then should be, you should try and get into that clothing maybe around, let's say, hour, hour or so before, before you land in Jeddah. As for getting into Ihram verbally by saying the intention, then that should be said as close as possible to the Miqat. So you'll be announced, you know, we'll be reaching the Miqat point in half an hour, for example. Then it'll be, say, 15 minutes. Uh, so even, you know, you want to be on the safe side and maybe five minutes, 10 minutes before the, the Miqat point, make the intention, no problem, inshallah. But as long as it's made before you reach the Miqat point. And inshallah, as I said, I'm sure you'll be given plenty of notice. And if you want to be on the safe side, then maybe, you know, 40, 40 minutes or so before landing, you can do so, inshallah. Um, okay, so removing hair, trimming the nails, applying a perfume. So be careful as well. You have you know, perfumed uh, wipes, etc., or uh, soap in the bathrooms, etc. You know, try and keep away from that. Engaging in any sexual activity, activity including kissing, caressing, and so on. Um, hunting. Uh, obviously, that won't apply to, to, to mo most people. Covering the head for the male pilgrims, of course, yeah? So once you're in there, you know, sometimes if you, at any point now, what I said you, before you're reaching Jeddah now, so this is probably more applies to if you're going to be sleeping at some point uh, to avoid putting something over your head. Wearing uh, limb-tailored garments that we talked about, uh, wearing niqab and gloves for the women, uh, and proposing or accepting proposals of marriage. Okay, so these are the restrictions uh, that apply. Okay. So now entering to Makkah, uh, now upon, upon entering Ihram, so this is said is to be said, uh, once you've said the Ihram, the entered into Ihram, you can start saying the Talbiyah. Okay, and that is Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik, La Sharika Laka Labbaik, Inna Alhamda Wa Ni'mata Laka Wal Mulk, La Sharika Laka. So that can be repeated, as said, around half an hour uh, at, at, the, at the Miqat point. So once you've entered into Ihram, you can start saying this. And this can be continued all the way until you enter uh, the haram ready for your for your tawaf. Okay, so that can be said. Yes, no problem, inshallah. Sunglasses is fine in, in the state of ihram. I said these things, the restrictions are on clothing, some sort of clothing that covers uh, a part of the body, like takes the, the shape of a, a part of the body. Uh, so if you have an indirect flight coming in from Riyadh, then likewise from Riyadh, uh, they will announce from Riyadh to Jeddah, along the way you'll be given notice, inshallah, as to the Miqat point. Okay? So I think likewise, it's probably something like around half an hour, 40 minutes or so before you land in Jeddah. Uh, so there's no restrictions on the sandals for women. Yeah, women can wear any kind of footwear. For the men, 
I feel that putting that is, uh, any kind of sandals will is it, fine. Like as long as we got the sandals, it doesn't cover the ankles. Uh, then inshallah, there's no restrictions. Yeah. So, uh, some say that part of the front of the foot. You know, you can most sandals would kind of expose that part anyway. Uh, but inshallah, the, that's not a problem. Yeah, as long as it's sandals. Yes, for women, anything is okay in terms of footwear. Okay, they don't have to wear any sand. You know, shoes, boots, whatever is is fine for women. The restrictions on sandals is for men. It's for men. Okay. Uh, so what we try and do, inshallah, is uh, just quickly go through this first, and then we'll take some. Uh, yeah, the sandal on the picture was fine. Yeah, the sandal on the picture was fine. So we'll try and just quickly go through this, and then if uh, one of the brothers can just uh, uh, collate the, the questions, and then we can, inshallah, answer them at the end. Okay, so as for, uh, okay, so all of these, uh, these uh, wherever you're coming in from, inshallah, the, if you're arriving at Jeddah, then it's around half an hour before Jeddah. That's what you need to know, roughly. But you can ask the, the stewards, the, your, whoever's with you, inshallah, uh, can give you more uh, more accurate uh, information regarding that. Okay, so now we're getting to uh, from the from the airport to Makkah now. Yeah, so along the way, you, you, inshallah, I'm going to be trying to say the the talbiya as often journey. For example, you're on the plane, you, you would say that. When you get on the coach, the coach sets, sets up, you can start saying it then as well. You're going to try and keep yourself busy with the talbiyah. Okay, we're going around the tawaf, the tawaf, uh, seven times in an anti-clockwise direction. Don't worry, everyone else is doing the same direction, so it's going to be hard for you to go the opposite way. Uh, and after checking in, uh, or, you know, you go to Masjid al-Haram for the tawaf. Obviously, you know, that will be arranged with the group, um, so you don't need to worry too much regarding that. Uh, before tawaf, make sure you're in a state of wudu. Yeah, for the tawaf in particular, you need to be in, in state of wudu. As for sa'i, it's not a problem if you're not in state of wudu, but it's preferable if you are. Okay. As for the men, before you start, you uncover the right shoulder. Okay, like as mentioned, uh, as shown in the picture there. That's called iftida. Uh, for the entire period of the tawaf, so all seven rounds. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, yes, you can. Uh, in Riyadh, well, actually, you're going to be at the airport. Um, it's probably going to be difficult to get hold of an ihram at the airport, I believe. Yeah, so you better off make an uh, arrangement. With that, inshallah. Um, okay, so then uh, the next slide, inshallah, starting the tawaf. Okay, the beginning of the tawaf starts at the black stone. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, if you break your wudu during tawaf, then you'd have, you, you just go out and, and make wudu. So you uh, there's certain wudu areas, but also probably what's easier is just where the zamzam canisters and so on are, uh, and some zamzam taps, just make wudu there and then come back and then restart from the beginning of, the, of that tawaf. So for example, if you've done one and a half tawafs and you need to make wudu, then you'd make wudu and then come back and you start the second round again. Yeah, so you ignore that half that you've done. You start again. Uh, the beginning of the tawaf starts at the black stone. Uh, and as you're walking past it and point to it, raise your hand and say, Allah Akbar. Okay, so you see the green lights. You'll see green lights in the, indicating it. Um, also along the Kaaba, which is not in the picture uh, there, but along the Kiswa, the black cloth of the Kaaba, the corner of the black stone has about four or five circular designs with Allahu Akbar written on it. Okay, so if you're kind of unsure from a distance, you can just look at it and says Allahu Akbar to know when the fit where the where the start point is. Okay, but no more no normally you'll be entering from gate one or King Abdul Aziz gate, which kind of heads towards the corner just prior to the black stone, which is the Yemeni corner. So once you come in, you're basically starting at the following corner, the black stone. Okay, you raise your hand, say Bismillah, Allah Akbar, and you start your tawaf. Uh, so in terms of touching the Kaaba, 
uh, perfumed and not permissible. So they do put perfume at certain areas like the, the Yemeni, around the Yemeni corner and stuff like that. Um, so generally, you know, the only areas of the Kaaba that you're encouraged to touch is the black stone, which is probably very difficult at the time, and the Yemeni corner. So you can touch it, inshallah. If you know that there's perfume on it, then don't touch it. Yeah, otherwise, if you're, you know, if there's nothing to, to indicate that yes, there has uh, perfume on it, you can't smell it, then it's not a problem, inshallah. Um, yeah. But if you feel that there is, or you can smell it or something like that, then then do not uh, do not approach, then do not touch that. In the first three circuits, male programs are recommended to jog quickly with short steps. So it's not quite a jog, but more short, fast steps. Yeah, short, fast steps, known as Ramal. And that's for the first three circuits for the male programs. And you don't need to worry. You can go at the same pace as your family members, you know, if they're women. Uh, no problem, inshallah. Uh, it's just basically kind of a jog on the spot type of uh, action. So you don't have to run off. Uh, you know, you can just go stay at the same pace as your family members. It's kind of like a jog on the spot, short, fast steps. You can recite any dhikr, Quran, dua, anything while circling the Kaaba. Uh, between the Yemeni corner and the black stone. So this is the, uh, when you've started the, the tawaf, you say Allah, Allah Akbar at the black stone. Then you have the next corner, uh, which is near the hijab, Ismail, the semicircle. Then you have another corner. The end of the semicircle, and then the third corner, uh, prior to the to going back to the black stone, or call it the fourth corner, uh, between that and the black stone, you repeat Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. Yeah, between the Yemeni corner and the black stone. Yeah, so you do that, inshallah. And every time you pass the black stone, you should face it and point towards it with your right hand and say, Allahu Akbar. Okay, Bismillah at the beginning. Allah Akbar for everyone every other time. When all seven circuits are complete, uh, when so now when you get round and you get to the black stone for the eighth time, yeah, because you've completed seven circuits, then you don't say Allah Akbar. Okay, so you only say Allah Akbar seven times. Okay, at the beginning of the of the circuit, not at the end. Uh, male pilgrims should then cover their right shoulders again. So your exposing of the right shoulder is for the for the for the tawaf only. Then you cover it again, find a spot behind the Maqam Ibrahim or anywhere in the masjid. Okay, it might be very difficult at a time to find the place there. No problem, find somewhere else. Remember, especially if you're with family, to be, be sure to try and keep together. On the way to going there to offer the salah, you can you can say what the min maqam Ibrahim Musalla. Okay. Um okay. So next one now you've prayed your, your two rakah. After that. You can uh, have some water, zamzam. You can drink some zamzam, pour it on your head uh, without making you know too much of a mess. Uh, and you know, drink as much as you can, inshallah. And then make your way to Sa'i. Sa'i is the walking back and forth between the two hills, Safa and Marwa, seven times. After completing the tawaf, go to a Safa mountain. That's where Sa'i starts. And there are uh, signboards that will direct you to this area. So we'll say Al-Mas'a, Sa'i area. Etc. They'll follow those signs to there. On the way to going to Safa, you can you can recite the ayah in the Safa wal Marwa min Shahirillah. فمن حج البيت أو أثمر فلا جناح عليه أن يطوف بهما ومن تطوع خيرا فإن الله شاكر عليم. Okay. So these all these duas that we are mentioning is something encouraged, right? If you forget, no problem, no problem at all, inshallah. And as for um. Uh, we'll talk about it when we when we finish the, the Sa'i part, inshallah. So when you reach Safa, you face the Kaaba and you say the following dua three times whilst making dua in between each of them. So you say this dua, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu al-mulk wa al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir la ilaha illallah wahdahu anjaza wa'dahu wa nasara abdahu wa hazam al-ahzaba wahdahu. So you say this dua, then you make your own dua. Then you say this dua, and then you say your own dua, and then you say this dua again. Okay, so you say this dua three times, and in between you say two duas of your own, and okay? whatever you want to say. You can say it as long long as the dua as you can. Uh, a lot of people just come there, say Allah Akbar, and walk off. No, spend some time making dua. Uh, you know, as as much as you can. Obviously, you're gonna be tired on the journey, but you know, 
try and make as much dua as you can. That's at Safa. Then you go to Marwa. I know a few questions have come up and I'll answer them, inshallah, once we've uh, just completed this, inshallah. Um, so then you go to Marwa. Along the way, you're going to see uh, some green lights above you. For the men, you can run between these green lights, inshallah. Yeah, run. And then you can just wait for your family at the end of the green lights, inshallah. Yeah. So then you continue to Marwa. When you get to Marwa, you say the exact same thing. You say this dua, then you say your own dua. Then this dua, then your own dua, then this dua. So you say and Marwa as well. Okay. So getting to Marwa now is one circuit. Then you come back. From, you say the dua and then you come back. Okay. So this is then walk towards the other end, which is, yeah. So we've mentioned this. No programs can run between this uh, this kind of green light that you see above you and the first picture and the second one. Uh, a few more programs should should walk at normal pace, inshallah. Uh, and of course, if you feel that, you know, you might lose each other or whatever, no problem. The, the man can you know, take it a bit easy, inshallah, no problem. Um, so when you get to Marwa now, you face the Kaaba, you say the same thing. Same dua uh, that you did at, um, at Safa. And you repeat this process until you have completed seven circuits. Now, where will you finish when you finish when you've completed seven circuits? Will you finish at Safa or Marwa? Safa. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, you're gonna no, no, not excellent. <laughs> Marwa, yes, Marwa. Uh, okay, so um, shows I wasn't paying attention there, right? So yeah, you don't, you will finish at Marwa. Why? Because going to Safa to Marwa is the odd number. Yeah, so you add up and Marwa first one, come back to Safa is two, back to Marwa is three, back to Safa is four, Marwa five, back to Safa is six, and then back to Marwa is seven. Okay, so always remember going from Safa to Marwa is an odd number. Coming from Marwa to Safa is an even number. So you finish with the odd number on Marwa. When you get to Marwa for the last one, then there's no dua. Okay. So you say the, the du'as previously and you end up marwa. What you will probably end up finding is that you'd have to walk back towards Safa to exit, to come out from where we want to we wanna head out. Because if you come out of marwa, it gets a bit long. But other than that, your actual umrah would finish at marwa or that part of your umrah. Of course, what, so they have kind of like a uh, an overview of, the, of what's going on here. So you have the, the Kaaba here, as you said, the Yemeni corner is the corner prior to the black stone, okay? As you go around, you have what is Hijr Ismail, like a semicircle. You need to ensure you don't cut through there, because that is part of the Kaaba, so you have to go around there, okay? Uh, once you finish, you try and pray somewhere behind Muhammad Ibrahim, but anywhere in the masjid is fine. Have some zamzam and then go to Safa, okay? Now, uh, yeah, so you see that the green lights on the Safa Marwa is kind of closer to the Safa side. Yes, yeah, a bit further from the Marwa side, closer to the Safa side. Once you've done this, completed this, then all that remains for your completion of Umrah is the halq of taqsir, which is halq means to shave your head, your, your head, and taqsir means to shorten or trim your hair. Okay? So shaving your head or shortening, trimming your head for the men, of course. After completing seven seconds of sayyid, male programs shave their hair or shave their head or shorten their hair. Shaving is better for them than shortening because the Prophet ﷺ made dua three times for those who shave their heads and once for those who shorten their hair. But of course, if you're, you're going to be coming up to possibly quite close to the Hajj day, so you may want to, you know, make it, you know, trim, it trim it and then do the shaving for the, uh, on the 10th of the Hijjah. Okay. Female, female programs only cut the length of a finger chip from their hair. Yes. From each block of the hair, you just take a, a fingertip, and that can be done back at the in your room uh, at the hotel. Sure. So after completing this final rite, the umrah is now complete. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so it's quite simple, inshallah. In summary, uh, you have the ihram. Uh, okay, so we're gonna if someone can just keep an eye on these on these questions, and I'm just gonna quickly conclude this and come back to these questions, inshallah. Okay, so ihram. So you have your ihram, tawaf, sa'i, and cutting of the hair. The ihram includes the dress, as well as the intention and declaration, as well as the restrictions of what you're not allowed to do. 
we went through all that. The tawaf, the seven circuits, and two rakah. Okay, simple. Uh, Sa'i, start at Safa and at Marwa. Uh, and, you know, making that dua at Safa, making the dua at Marwa if you can, if you remember. No, if you don't, no problem. Uh, and the, the cutting of the hair and or, or shaving or shortening. That's it, inshallah. So it's simple. Um, there are as I said, certain du'as that we can try to do. If we don't remember the du'as, don't panic. No, it's okay, inshallah. It's not a, it's not an obligatory part of it. But it's better if you can to try and remember to do it. Uh, as for the other times, uh, going around from the black stone to the Yemeni corner, I said any du'a, any Quran, any dhikr, you should do it. Child. Sending salah upon the Prophet Allah sallim sallim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, you know, that's fine as well, inshallah. Um, try and do du'as that come from your heart, okay? So, uh, try and, uh, so try and, you know, not be so engrossed in just trying to read from a book. You know, try and, you know, if it's in your own language, no problem. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will hear and understand, uh, understand and hear you. So, so, you know, try and, you know, have it from the heart. You know, of course, remember your brothers and sisters in, in Gaza and elsewhere in your du'as. You know, it's a great responsibility for us all, inshallah. Keep them in your du'as from now, of course, as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, take it easy, inshallah. Try your best to do as much as you can from the sunnah and the du'as. But if you forget something, no problem, inshallah, no problem. And even with regards to the restrictions in ihram, you know, if a person accidentally you know, touch some perfume or something, no problem, just wash it off, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, worry that, you know, some hairs come off, no problem, inshallah. If it's done unintentionally, out of ignorance, it's not a problem, inshallah. Okay, if there is something issue that comes up, specific issues, you know, we can be, we can deal with that uh, as and when it comes, inshallah. Okay, uh, so, and what du'as to say in Sa'i, likewise, you can say any du'as, dhikr, Quran, sending salah upon the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad. You know, all these things, you're, you're, you're free to say what you want. Those du'as that we mentioned on Safa and Marwa, again, if you if you say that, it's good. If you forget it or you can't remember or you're panicking, whatever, no problem. Just say whatever du'as you want. La ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la If that's what you you remember, no problem, inshallah. Okay? What we don't want is for people to come and start panicking and all my, my phone's dead, I've I had this du'as here, I've had this, that, and that. No, you know, relax, you're here, you're, you're addressing one who hears and understands every language, okay? Let it come from the heart, you haven't got a book, no problem. You know, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you don't need uh, anything to read to, to pour your heart, uh, heart out to Allah, right? So inshallah, you know, try and prepare for this as best as you can to come out with the best umrah that you can. But don't stress either, either, inshallah. Try and let it flow, let it come from the heart. Don't stress. Uh, inshallah, Allah will make it easy. Um, and I think that's kind of it. Yeah, so post-Umrah, obviously you're going to be there. Uh, this is kind of more directed. Yeah, so you're going to be there in Hajj in the, in the best days of the year. Okay? So pray all your five prayers at the, at the masjid, of course. Uh, you know. You're going to be putting it as easy as so they have some local messages there as well. It doesn't have to be in the in the haram. Uh, you know, trying to do pr night prayers, dhikr, Quran, and remember charity, tawaf, uh, you know, whatever you can. Uh, obviously, uh, there's going to be times when you're that will probably be easier when you're actually staying in the in the period after Hajj, uh, closer to the haram. Um, uh, attend lectures, attend the programs that will be in place, inshallah. Um, do we have any more? It's at the end of the slides. Okay, so funeral prayer, you know, try and um, uh, you'll be likely offering very many funeral prayers while you're there. You know, pretty much every salah in the haram has uh, funeral prayers. So try and from this month that you have from now, try and get into, you know, revise over what you have to say. So there's a couple of ways to say it. Uh, one is to say Bismillah, uh, to say Allahu Akbar after the first uh, takbir. Okay, and the Imam would say, and you say it. Uh, and then you say, uh, and the Surah Fatiha. Okay, in the first, after the first takbir. Or another way, according to the Hanafi way, is to say the, the Thana, which is Subhanakallah, Alhamdulillah, 
دكتور قسمك وتعالى جدك ولا اله الا غيرك. Okay. Uh, then after the second takbir, uh, you say you send salah upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, the, the durood, uh, the salah and salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa Salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka Hamidul Majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka Hamidul Majid. And then you have the third takbir, after which you say a dua for the deceased. Okay, so after the third takbir, you say a dua for the deceased. Uh, and there's a number of duas, and inshallah, from now, try to memorize, you know, some of the smaller duas that are there. So you say, for example, Allahumma fir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina wa saghirina wa kabirina wa dhakrina wa anthana. Allahumma man ahiyyitahu minna fa ahiyyi ala al-islam wa man tafqaytahu minna fa tawaffahu ala al-iman. Allahumma la tahrimna ajrahum wa la tundillana ba'dahum. Um... Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, so and after the fourth takbir, uh, then the salam is given. Once to the right hand side, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and you follow as the Imam. Yes, uh, Jazakallah khair for somebody who's pointed out. I forgot to mention in the, in the tawaf, for the first three, uh, oh, I think I did mention actually, right? I did mention, yeah. Uh, the first three uh, rounds, you do what is known as ramal, which is like a short, fast steps, a short, fast steps. Little kind of a jog, it's not really a jog because you're not really going at fast speed, uh, but it's kind of like a jogging on the spot type of thing. Uh, and that's done for the first three. I don't know if I mentioned only the first three, but it's the first three that you do it, and then the rest of the four you can walk.